I'm Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. In the last episode, I talked about setting up dosing pumps, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to set up your calcium reactor. I love calcium reactors on tanks above 200-ish gallons because you get the most bang for your buck in terms of supplement added to your tank for the money. You simply can't dose a large tank, especially a large tank with grown-in corals, and make it work. You got to mix up too much solution, buy too much additives, it's a headache and it costs you more money in the long term. So we're going to talk about calcium reactors today and how to set one up. Now to know how to set one up, you have to understand the science behind them. And the science behind them is actually really simple. The lower the pH, the faster that a calcium carbonate skeleton, which is what calcium reactor media is, dissolves into solution. When the media dissolves into solution, it's providing alkalinity, calcium, and trace elements to your saltwater tank. Okay, we got that down. Now what do you need to set up a calcium reactor? A CO2 bottle. You can get these from your local welding supply store, and of course make sure it's filled with CO2 gas. A CO2 regulator to regulate the carbon dioxide going into the calcium reactor. You'll need a pH controller to turn on and off the CO2 regulator. And a pH probe, which usually comes with the CO2 controller. 4.0 and 7.0 pH calibration fluid. And you need a feed pump. I use and recommend the Cichet Synchro Silent Pump. I use the 1.0, and if you have a smaller calcium reactor, the 0.5 pump will work just fine. Then you need calcium reactor media. I use the Two Little Fishies Reborn media, and you're gonna to wanna to get what size of media depending on what your calcium reactor manufacturer tells you. I also will mix in Two Little Fishies Remag calcium reactor media, as this will boost magnesium levels coming out of the calcium reactor. Of course, you need a calcium reactor. Kind of hard to miss, but I still need to mention it. Then you're gonna need some way to test your tank's water to see how things are going. You can do that manually with an alkalinity or calcium test kit, or you can do it automatically with an automatic water tester like the Neptune Systems Trident that I use. With dosing pumps and with calcium reactors, there's some amount of set it and forget it. You're gonna get used to them, you're gonna get the feel of them, but you don't wanna just set them up and then leave them. You have to see how things are going and adjust them along the way. Now, that's not a bad thing because as you see progress in your tank, you're gonna to need to dial up your dosing and dial up your calcium reactor. So you gotta test and see how things are going. Once you've got all that gear, then it's time to actually set up your calcium reactor. Now I gotta give credit where credit is due on this one to my whole reefing buddy Kevon. He's the one who taught me this method and I've been using it for at least eight years now and it's worked every single time. So here's how I set up that calcium reactor. Set up your CO2 regulator in the CO2 controller per the manufacturer's instructions and then fill your calcium reactor per the manufacturer's instructions as well. And set the rate of the water coming out of the calcium reactor such that you have a constant stream that's just about to break into drips. This is too slow. Right here is where you want it. Then set your CO2 regulator to one bubble every second. Next, you set the bubble size coming out of the CO2 regulator. Too big of a bubble, this thing's gonna turn on and off very quickly, which is gonna wear it down. Too small of a bubble, you're not gonna get the pH inside of your calcium reactor low enough to get it down to your set points. Now don't freak out about that piece of information. There's lots of leeway on this. If you overshoot or undershoot, you can quickly see that and make a small adjustment and you fixed it. So what set point? Well, you have to tell the CO2 controller where you want it to turn on and where you want it to turn off. I recommend you start at a pH setting of 7.4 for the high and 7.3 for the low. When the pH inside of the calcium reactor gets above 7.4, your CO2 regulator is gonna turn on, let CO2 into your calcium reactor and drop that internal pH. When it gets below 7.3, this thing is gonna turn off, cut off the CO2, and then the pH inside of your calcium reactor is naturally gonna come back up. Now keep this in mind about set points. Until you get down to about 7.0 for the internal pH of your calcium reactor, you're not gonna get tons of media melt. So starting at 7.3 and 7.4 is very conservative, and that's okay. Start slow. It's not like because you started at such a low level, all your corals are gonna die and everything's gonna crash. No, you've got plenty of leeway in this. You're gonna have to test to make sure that things are working, and if you set it too low, you can easily start to dial things down and dial that calcium reactor in. Then let things ride for 24 hours. 
After 24 hours, if your CO2 controller logs pH, then you can look at the graph to make sure you're not over or undershooting the low pH set point. If you're overshooting it, you're going to want to make that bubble size coming out of the CO2 regulator a little bit smaller. When the CO2 regulator is turned on, a lower value on the regulator gauge, that's the one with smaller numbers, means a smaller bubble size. Larger value, bigger bubble. If you can't get the pH down to your set point, then you need to make your bubble size bigger. Then test. Test your alkalinity and calcium to see if you need to increase the set point in your calcium reactor. Wait 24 hours and test again. You gotta test to see how things are going. As long as my bubble size is set correctly, I only adjust the pH set point. I don't fiddle with bubbles per second or the flow rate coming out of the calcium reactor. I realize I just gave you a fair amount of information. It may seem like you're drinking from a fire hose, and I can relate. The first time I set up a calcium reactor, I was like, whoo, this seems complicated. But look, after the first week of having it, you get used to things, you get it dialed in, it's a piece of cake. One thing that I found that really helps with my calcium reactor setup and longevity and keeping things stable in my tank is to have spare calcium reactor media and a spare CO2 bottle that's full of CO2 gas on hands at any given time. It never fails that you're gonna run out of media, you're gonna run out of gas at the worst possible time, and when you need it, you're not gonna have it. And as your tank really gets grown in, it's gonna need a lot of alkalinity and calcium to keep things going. On my old 450 gallon tank, once the corals were grown in, if the calcium reactor happened to be off because I ran out of gas or I ran out of media, I could drop one to one and a half DKH a day. So have that media on hand, have that spare CO2 on hand. When you use it, replenish it. We've got plenty on hand at saltwateraquarium.com. You'll be thankful that you have it. I love calcium reactors on larger systems. They work great. Set one up, get used to it, start slow. It'll give you lots of room for error. Then you get the thing dialed in and you can watch your tank just take off with that coral growth. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Till next time, enjoy your tanks, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.